My name is Charles. 12 years ago, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. It set me on a journey to better understand this condition. It's taken me around the world as I hope to change not only my life, but others living with this disease. I've teamed up with some of the best in health to find ways to not only control, but to reverse. It does not take much to live for others, and what we leave is how we will be remembered. I hope at the end of this journey, we will see that hope is a good thing and the start of a better future. Welcome to Reversed. I think that you know one of the reasons we choose Costa Rica is to is to take people away from their comfort zone, right? We want to make sure that they are away from the trappings of family and friends and work and stress and 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 as they say in, in Costa Rica, Puerto Vida. So they're coming to a place where they can actually relax, see the beautiful scenery, see the beautiful people. You know, going forward, this is a series that we could all be proud of. It, we're, we're one big family here, from the crew to to the experts to even the locals that work with us to help make this production what it is. And I'm excited about what the future is. And um, you know, let's hope that Reverse can continue to change lives. What's going on, guys? How are we doing today? Doing great. very well. Doing good. Y'all settled in? Did you have a good night's sleep? Yes. Okay. Good. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about fitness, which is about why it's important, and we're going to talk about how you can get started. Sound good? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, first off, before we get started, I'm Coach Bronson. I've been doing health and fitness coaching for over 12 years. I've been carnivore for almost five years. So the combination of fitness, the combination of good nutrition mm -hmm. is really what I bring to trying to help people understand how what we're doing in this journey isn't about fat loss. It's not about looking good. It's about improving your quality of life. It's about how can I live better? How can I do more things physically? How can I not have the physical limitations of my body limit the things that I can experience in life? So if I have poor mobility, if I have weakness, if I have things that are going on that don't allow me to do things, I can fix that. So I was in my mid 40s and I had found fitness. I was a CrossFit gym owner. I had been doing CrossFit for a while. I was in shape, uh, but I was not healthy. So I still had IBS, I still had urgent bowels, I still had body fat that I just couldn't seem to get rid of. And even though I could do things physically, I just wasn't in general happy with the way that I felt and the energy I had throughout the day and how I looked, all, the whole big, the whole thing, like a lot of people are at, a point that a lot of people are at. Um, I was introduced to the idea of just eating meat and not eating any vegetables. And unlike a lot of people, I just went all in right from day one. So May 1st, 2018, I stopped eating vegetables and I haven't eaten any since. So it's been almost five years now that I haven't had any vegetables and it was probably the best decision that I've made. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside. You guys ready? Get some yes. sun? Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll talk about sun and vitamin D and all that kind of stuff too at some point, but get outside, get some sun, get some movement in. And we're gonna talk about the seven essential movements, how to get them going, how to start, how to figure out if I have a limitation, maybe I, do, I can't squat all the way. How do I actually get that and progress so that I can get better at the, each of these things? Cool, any questions so far? This is sounding great. Good, 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 good. You guys ready? Yes. All right, let's do it. Yep. All right guys, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to move our bodies a little bit. We're gonna go over those seven movements we talked about, okay? To get started, we talk about squatting. Like we said inside, if, you're, if you can sit down, then you can squat, right? If you have to go to the bathroom anytime and you sit on the toilet, you are squatting, okay? Squatting is an essential movement, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so when we're squatting, all, all we're doing is we're putting our feet out comfortably apart and then we're taking our butt and we're gonna sit down until we feel that stretch, feel that tightness. The biggest thing you need to realize is that you don't start carnivore just to lose weight. Most people get on the carnivore 
lifestyle and start going to more meat and less vegetables and less plant matter because they have health issues that they're trying to improve. It's about improving quality of life. It's about improving metabolic function. And it's about improving the things that your body can do, removing stress and increasing the capability of your body. The biggest thing that people need to include in that process is fitness. Fitness goes hand in hand with nutrition. Nutrition handles the internal function, the internal stress, the internal performance of our body. Fitness allows for better management of the external stresses, the physical stresses and the physical performance of our body. We need both of them together and we need to make sure that we're doing things that reduce stress, improve strength, build lean muscle, improve metabolic function. And the two of these things work together fantastically. If you can't move your body, it doesn't matter how good your diet is. If you're sedentary and you're not doing things in order to optimize what you're doing on the nutrition side, then you're doing that incorrectly as well. Have you ever heard of food addiction? Do you feel like you might actually be suffering from some level of food addiction? My name is Dr. Sarah Zaldivar, and I'm a nutrition professor at Miami-Dade College, and I'm a content creator, especially focused on the carnivore diet. How would you define food addiction? Abnormally high desire for certain foods, a craving that probably goes away temporarily, mm -hmm. and then returns with an even greater vigor afterwards. How many of you would say that the reason sometimes we struggle to eat what we know is healthy for us is mainly because of those cravings, mainly because we have a level of food addiction that maybe we're not completely aware of its extent. And so it rears its head like what you said, Dennis, right? When you try to stop, then you're more aware that you are having the, this pull towards eating food, even though you know it's not in your best interest. How many of you would say you're struggling or have experienced cravings? I have experienced. Sure. Everybody, yes, everybody, me too. Sure. And I'm sure mm -hmm. you have, right? Exactly. <clears throat> so yeah, food addiction is a very real biological fact. The studies are coming out and they are proving what we already know just by trying to eat healthier. We have a lot of rodent studies that have really chilling results showing that sugar can be four to eight times more addictive than cocaine and very high concentrations of cocaine. When you look under the definition of eating disorders, food addiction is not there. And it's not gonna be there anytime mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the whole eating disorders was <clears throat> anorexics, bulimics, and they don't want you to fear any food, which I argue causes a lot of anxiety around food. You, you know, you have food issues, you're thinking about it often with the anorexis and bulimics, but that's why society doesn't accept food addiction as an addiction, even though we know the studies show, even when the rats are given a shock when they choose the sugar or cocaine without the shock, they choose the sugar. What got me to be a nutritionist is when I was 16, I was twice my size and I wasn't feeling well. I went to the doctor and the doctor said, you have something called PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is basically a type two diabetes that affects female fertility. I was, uh, I had acid reflux, I had IBS, um, I had depression, and that doctor gave me three medications at the young age of 16. And I never once filled them because I changed my life. But it is interesting how society doesn't want to accept food addiction as real because they're all dealing with it. They want to go have the ice cream. And I think when you say we're supposed to grow rings, mm -hmm. you know, they're growing rings so they want us to also. Mm -hmm. You all raised your hand when she asked if anybody has a food addiction. When did you know that moment that you were food addicted? So for me it was when I tried to stop. It was yeah. as soon as I I mean, it's within hours of, of saying, I'm, I'm not going to have, and it just, your brain starts with, you know, go, looking for what's next to eat. You know, that was, that was what I realized. I knew I had an addiction, like cheesies, when I went to the bulk barn, five pounds of cheesies. <clears throat> that was my 
I wasn't a bad food eater, but I would buy this big bag of cheesies. A great tip for anybody wanting to detox from the addiction, don't let anything sweet cross your lips. Yeah. So stevia, monk fruit extract, artificial sweeteners, or even actual sugar, obviously. You don't want to remember the taste of the sweetness, mm -hmm. especially if you particularly are drawn to sugar. This is an ongoing process. We're changing a lot of habits. If you need any help, don't hesitate to reach out. We can do one-on-ones, and this is what we're here for, to stage this intervention and support you into finally breaking free from food addiction. Well, thank you very much. That's awesome. pretty, pretty encouraging. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. That's great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Hey everybody, good to see you again. Um, I'm Ken Berry, I'm a family physician. I've been practicing family medicine for over 20 years now. And I've been eating a carnivore diet for about five years now. So I'm Dr. Ken Berry, I'm a family physician and a YouTuber now, that still sounds weird. And uh, I'm so excited to be back here in Costa Rica with Charles again this year talking about the power of a proper human diet and how it can literally transform people's health. And so I, I'm hoping you guys have some questions about what a carnivore diet is and why in the world you would want to do such a thing. Uh, I hope you have questions about that. And I've got two friends here with me who are going to help explain as we talk about this. Yeah, so I got involved with carnivore only four months ago. And in that four months, I <clears throat> feel I feel a lot healthier. I feel like it's the best decision I made, really. Um, but now there's different versions of carnivore. Just in talking to people, some people are uh, meat, salt only. Some people are uh, meat, eggs, butter, meat, eggs, butter, bacon, um, which is the ideal yeah. version to follow. And that's an excellent question <clears throat> because, first of all, you're actually thinking about the food you eat. And I think that's a beautiful first step for all of us is to never thoughtlessly eat food. And so you're right, there are several schools of thought about a meat-based or a carnivore diet. And there's, there's a, a list of reasons why we recommend carnivore. Uh, so number one is, you're going to be eating a very, very low carbohydrate diet. By design, it's impossible not to be. And for anyone who's overweight, obese, diabetic, fatty liver, that's gonna fix those. That's gonna reverse those chronic conditions as Dr. Mm -hmm. Chafee alluded to. And then the second thing is, is that you're going to be removing a lot of potentially inflammatory things from your diet. And so that becomes important for people with autoimmune conditions or repetitive infections. Those things get better when you remove those inflammatory, irritating agents. Doctor, that's exactly what took me to my doctor and I was diagnosed with diabetes type 2. So, uh, I just wanted to make that point about constipation, so I'm very eager to hear what you have well, to say. Well, well, so think about diabetes damaging the microvessels. They damage the microvessels of your bowels. It causes some form of gastroparesis. Your bowels are not moving normally, right? To me, as once again, as a doctor, my passion is to help people to stop the suffering. It doesn't take an MD, a PhD. It just takes any and all of us to be part of this tribe of inspiration and reversed series is about that inspiration to help you be healthier than you've ever known before. And so there's some, some muscle and nerve damage to the bowels that affects that. But what is constipation? How often should you have a bowel movement? And we're used to, you have to have it at least once a day, right? And, and you, you, if you're not, you need to take a drug. And I know myself, I suffered for years with what I thought was constipation. Then I had bowel bleeding and I had hemorrhoids and many other problems that just couldn't be fixed until I went carnivore and recognized that ultimately, now I have a bowel movement maybe <clears throat> twice a week. Did you have a question? Yeah, so a lot of the messaging I hear on fiber is that we need it to feed our gut bacteria yeah. and have a healthy microbiome mm. with as much diversity as we can. <clears throat> um, what is really the best way to be nourishing our gut bugs? Our microbiome, just a sign of our 
good or bad health, right? Are we eating the right things? We have, we see certain <clears throat> bacteria and we say, oh, that's associated with, with better health outcomes or worse health outcomes. That could just be a, a downstream byproduct. That could be, um, you know, an effect as opposed to a cause as well. So that's something to think about as well. So I always had a particular interest in diet and nutrition just because I wanted to feel the best that I could and perform as well as I could athletically. I always played sports since I was a young child and then took that more seriously later on. Also, just given my predilection for science and biology and my interest in becoming a doctor, this was something that naturally fit into my world studying nutrition and biology. Thank you guys for doing this. I hope we've answered a few questions and we're here to answer all the rest of your questions, but thanks for sitting down with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this day has been unfolding in amazing ways for me. One is I'm meeting so many of my co-inspirational uh, uh, mentors in the carnivore space, uh, Dr. Berry, Dr. Chafee, but also meeting so many inspirational students that are new in wanting to learn about this carnivore journey and heal their diseases such as diabetes and many others. So today's been a great day. I think the house guests are really excited about this carnivore diet. They're eager and hungry for knowledge and that's always a good sign. Maria's been cooking some delicious carnivore food and they've been enjoying that as well. And I think it's a little eye-opening to realize, hey, this food is delicious, but this is a diet that's gonna improve my health. So I think the day has been a great success. I think the house guests have learned a lot, got a lot of questions answered, and I've had a blast hanging out with them and everyone else. And I can't wait for tomorrow. So Maria, I kind of wanted to, I was thinking it was a kind of little touchy subject, but I wanted to talk to you about something. Yeah. And, um, because you know, I, I also paste, uh, post on our Instagram page. Yeah. And I'm not the type of person that likes like negative things. I and uh, let's see, let me see right here. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing like some very negative posts. I know, I saw it. Yeah, I, I, you know, I wouldn't even want to read it to you per se. There's some people kind of talking about like your your weight and things like that mm -hmm. and um you know number one I, I, how do you deal with that yeah. and did you want to address it because yeah, you know, obviously people who are going to be watching what we're doing it'd probably be a good idea to yeah. kind of clear it up you know for some people it's baby steps and it was for me and i don't think we should judge people whatever their journey is but encourage them what's interesting is those people behind those nasty comments, yeah. they have no idea what I deal with in life. Yeah. They have no idea the struggles I'm dealing with in life. Yeah. They have no idea how active I am. Yeah. They have no idea how much I eat. They have no idea. I think part of it is we're a very judgy society. Yeah. We are. Yeah. People love to go sit at the state fair and judge all the people walking by. Yeah. And I give my life the last 20 years I've been working with clients. Free advice, nutrition, I try to help so many people and for people to be so cruel breaks my heart. And I'm dealing with a lot of um, family struggles. And it's hard. You know, and some people they eat when they're depressed, some people don't, you know. To see someone go from so strong, your husband go from so strong to so weak, can't even walk. You know, so those people that see those nasty comments, they just, psh, I have bigger problems, you know. Because I, I, as soon as I saw some of those com comments, I'm like, people have no idea what somebody's dealing with. They don't no. know if somebody is dealing with some kind of other issue. You know, I don't think. I am, I'm dealing with a lot, yeah. a lot. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, the, my children, and it's just, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Um, you know, I lost, I lost my partner. I had to take care of him, too. Yeah. 
you know? So it just became like my jobs were outrageous, mm -hmm. plus the pressure of, you know, being the breadwinner yeah. was a lot, yeah. you know? So it's just work and taking care of everybody else yeah. was more important. Yeah. And I did like yeah. talk to everybody and I am gonna take care of myself. Yeah. I am yeah. gonna start lifting weights again because I, I was really happy doing that. Yeah. I felt really strong, and I do hope you do another season. Yeah, yeah. And I will have 10 pounds of muscle on me, <laughs> and we'll just be like, see, you know? No, I, it bothers me, because I know you, and I care about you, and I see your beautiful family, and I, I see how much passion you put into Thanks. what you do. And I'm like, you know, save your comments, see yourself. Thank you. All right, young lady, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, like, more than you know. Coming up on Reversed. You can lose fat and gain muscle and your weight doesn't change at all. No plants, no sugar, nothing artificial. Well, what I've learned is our standard American diet, which is pretty much a high plant-based, lean meat diet and no red meat, is causing all of our problems. Carbs, plants, and sugars damage our cells and bodies, causing dysfunction and disease. Leading fertility specialist, Dr. Robert Kiltz, has a solution for improving your health and wellness. A high-fat, no-carb carnivore diet featuring inflammation-reducing foods like bacon, eggs, butter, and beef, combined with intermittent feasting, improves glucose and insulin levels and virtually all aspects of your health. Learn more in Dr. Kiltz's new book, Kiltz's Keto is Carnivore, a guide for a fertile life and beyond. Available at Amazon.com. Some of my favorite compliments that I've gotten is when I'm called a magician in the kitchen. And it's really not me, it's the ingredients I'm using. I'm always looking for adding flavor and umami to my cooking. And one thing that I always use, always use is Fond Bone Broth. It not only tastes delicious, it uses the best quality ingredients, and there's no sugar. A lot of bone broths have sugar in them, so this is just another reason why I love Fond. They have an awesome video for you to check it out, and here it is. Animals don't need antibiotics or added growth hormones to grow big and healthy. All we need are a set of farming practices that are as old as time, an unwavering dedication to you, our customer, and an unshakable drive to produce the highest quality, healthiest meat in the world. U.S. Wellness Meats. Our animals eat right, so you can too. So uh, we're gonna go through a body composition test where you're gonna stand here and you're gonna put yourself in, in different sensors right there and in here as well. As you can see, there are two here, two here. And what do we get from this? We get a measurement of body weight per or percentage of body fat, also muscle mass, total water, even uh, visceral fat. Okay, now, it is important to know that these are not direct measurements. This works in a way that it sends, those sensors send an electric, electrical current that goes through your body and depending on the amount of water, it makes some calculations and decides what exactly your body composition is. We're gonna make a first measurement and then we will do another one at the end to see how it has changed. It is great to influence people because especially being immersed in, a, in an experience other than just being educated with no practical experience, um, it is a completely different result. So we had sessions where we would explain to the participants all the reasons why and all the outcomes that they could expect. Yeah, so the, the, the reason we do this, the reason why weight isn't 
beneficial in tracking your progress is because we don't know what's changing your weight. You can lose fat and gain muscle and your weight doesn't change at all. Okay, you can lose some fat, lose some weight. You can gain some muscle, gain some weight. So there's, a, there's what's happening in your body because we know that if we lose fat, we're reducing inflammation. Okay, if we're gaining muscle, then we're increasing our metabolic performance. So there's a lot of aspects of what your body's made up of and things like visceral fat. You talk about it's not just body fat, but the fat inside your body. That's dangerous fat. So we want that to go down no matter what else is happening. So being able to track and figure out what's going on in your body other than just how much you weigh, that's why we use this. Yeah. So let's go for it. Yeah, cool. So basically what you're going to do, come on up, you're going to take your shoes off. We're going to wipe this down real quick. Uh, because we got multiple people, we don't want your feet germs, mm -hmm. you know, getting everywhere. <clears throat> wipe this down. And you're going to stand with your heel on the back. Okay, and then you, now make sure you're, you're on the sensors with your heel. So scoot your heels out just a little bit. There you go. And then grab the handle, thumb goes on that part, and then fingers there. Now you're going to hold it relaxed, okay? Not super tense, relaxed. Put your arms up just a little bit. Good. And then just sit there and chill. And the important thing to remember when you're getting this, guys, is that there's, this isn't a reflection of you. This is just telling you what your body's made of, okay? So this is just getting a set of numbers so we know what we can do to make the changes we want to make. So what, what can we expect to happen from the first measurement to the second measurement? Uh, you're going to lose fat, even though carnivore uh, is and can be high in fat. The fact that we're not using carbohydrates a lot, uh, at all, that means that your insulin levels are going to be stable. That way your body can have access to your fat, internal and external, the subcutaneous fat as well as the, the one that is in your viscera. And what we can expect is going to happen is that even though we're doing a high fat diet, which according to the regular con or conventional view is going to make you fat, it's going to be completely the opposite. And it's going to be shown in this. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that's fun to see. So what we're going to do is I'll take all this information and we're going to discuss everything we found in a later session and then we will do another assessment to see the difference between the first and the second session and there you will see the difference. Ooh, that'll, that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Awesome. Thank Thanks you. guys. Being here at Reverse Carnivore is still kind of in a dream for me. I've gotten to know a lot of the experts that are here and over the last couple of years talked with them at different events, spent some time doing videos and podcasts, but the idea of all of us coming together in one space to talk about something that we are all passionate about, share ideas. So the one thing I wanna get out of this is information that is easily accessible to people to understand how beneficial carnivore can be to improving their quality of life. Not losing weight, improving their quality of life. Okay, everybody, are you having fun so far? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, excellent, we thought we would have a little roundtable discussion about what is a carnivore diet, what you can eat, what you shouldn't eat. I think there are a lot of misconceptions out there. Nothing excites me more. That's what gets me out of bed every day, is knowing that with the knowledge I give people, they're going to be able to improve their own health without pharmaceuticals, without supplements, without joining a course or spending a bunch of money or time they can improve their health and that's that's what makes me tick to, to me I, I like to think of things in the context of what not to eat being as important as what to eat right so you're eating meat you're eating fat you're drinking water these are all good things that are healthy for your body that's great but there are other things that actually cause harm and so those are things you want to avoid and so for me i have sort of three rules with that which is no plants no sugar nothing artificial and that would go for sauces seasonings and drinks as well and so you can ask yourself something comes up it's like oh we're going to put some pepper on it well no that's a plant or what about some honey well that's sugar so i found the carnivore diet sort of through a circuitous method i 
was taking cancer biology and we were learning about how toxic plants were and how actually a lot of the plant toxins that they use naturally to defend themselves in nature against predation were actually carcinogenic. And I remember thinking in my head, but aren't, aren't vegetables still good for you? And I remember my professor looking at us and saying, I don't eat salad. I don't eat vegetables. And uh, But any sort of meat that you feel good on and makes you feel good are fine as well. And then just keep it simple. Just just eat meat and drink water and, and see what your body's telling you uh, as to what works and what doesn't. So for me, I'm a lazy cook. I don't really want to spend a lot of time cooking or in the kitchen. I want to eat ASAP. So what I usually do is I stick to the simplest meals. I sear up some steaks, I sear up some ground beef, I have some animal fats with it to keep it high fat. I love butter. So steak and butter, my name's Steak and Butter Gal. That's kind of why I came up with it when I first started carnivore. All I really craved for was steak and butter. And I think that's another great tip. What do you crave for on the carnivore diet? That is animal foods, meaty, fatty, um, just go with what you crave. My biggest concerns when I first went carnivore was I lost my period. I was suffering with amenorrhea and I didn't have a cycle for more than two years. And that was honestly because I was malnourished on the vegan diet. I was eating such low fat meals and not enough protein, too many carbs, too many processed foods as well. So when I lost my period, I started freaking out because my goal is to have a happy, healthy family one day. I got my blood tested and my doctor literally sat me down and said, you are deficient in so many vital things, especially vitamin D. You are anemic. What is going on? I'm on the vegan diet. And she literally said, time to take supplements or eat meat. Keep it simple. Yeah. That's really it. Bacon, eggs, butter, beef occasionally kilts his ice cream and salt. <laughs> That's the baby's way. I'm a fertility doctor. So the baby's way is the way. And I know Dr. Ken uses baby B, 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 E the for yeah. eggs and bacon, eggs, butter, beef, and salt. Isn't that simple, right? You don't need to make it difficult. I personally like to do one meal a day. Sometimes you do a snack or two, but it's that one fatty meat a day. Well, what I've learned is our standard American diet, which is pretty much a high plant-based lean meat diet and no red meat, is causing all of our problems. And pretty much plants are all sugar and the plants contain poisons um, and chemicals that are damaging to all of us. And the first thing to go is our reproductive function. And that's kind of one of the most amazing things is uh, young women will have menstrual pain, heavy periods, irregular periods, as I said, polycystic ovarian syndrome or metabolic syndrome. And I was always looking for the why part of it. Well, it's just your genetics and you're unlucky. Well, maybe it's not your genetics. Maybe it's just your diet. So I want to take a different take on it too. If you're wanting the variety, there are so many different creative things you can make out of animal foods and in particular eggs. So we've got Maria's recipe is an incredible resource. There's all different kinds of breads, rolls, things that kind of taste like the foods that you're used to. So I'm Emily Harvo. I'm 51 years old. I've been eating carnivore for two years now and I have lost 150 pounds, half my size from combining the carnivore diet with intermittent fasting. This has been a huge part of how my success journey has gone and it's been a lot more about weight loss for me. I feel so much better, my moods are better, it's been an incredible transforming journey and I've become so passionate about it that I am a carnivore coach. So I have four kids and they like the variety, they like some cheese included, they like some dairy included and so it sort of depends on what your goals are and what you're wanting because there is ample opportunity to be a foodie in the carnivore world. When you're starting, I do think for most people, simple is best, but if that starts to get boring for you, just rest assured there's a lot of different ways that you can come up with really creative recipes just from your basic carnivore foods. So yeah, I guess just keep it simple. If you only like ground beef, you don't have to go with the ribeyes. You can just do ground beef and salt and that's fine. If you just like pulled pork, you can just do that. Now, only if you feel like there are certain symptoms that have not resolved, then you can play around and look at certain food sensitivities like eggs and dairy. Eggs and dairy are part of the top seven most common food sensitivities in the world. And so this, those are the two things that I normally like to start with. 
Coming here to Costa Rica and being surrounded by all of the amazing experts and everybody that's doing the good work in the carnivore diet sphere has been one of the most beautiful experiences I've had in my life. Everybody is so nice, so passionate, so kind, so well-meaning, and everybody's literally the picture of health. So when I first started eating this way, and it's been it's been a long time for me, my doctor was really open to the idea of eat, and yes, it was a real doctor, my, my <laughs> medical doctor, I hit jackpot. And I found one uh, 17 years ago that told me that it was the fiber that was upsetting my IBS symptoms and that it was the sugar and carbs that had me inflamed and I used to have all these boils. And he said, just, he didn't say animal products, but it was like, eat meat, eat eggs, eat dairy. For the whole time I've been carnivore, if you had asked me, what is, what is your point in talking about it? And some of the times I've talked about it have not gone over well. As a matter of fact, where I got a lot of negative feedback, but I kept thinking, but at least they've heard about it. <laughs> at least now they've heard that it's even an option, that eating meat is an option. So what are the benefits of adding extra fat to a meal that already contains saturated fat? You know, I know that's the, you know, the, the bad three-letter word is fat, right? Right. There's multiple benefits. First of all, it tastes better, so you're going to enjoy your meal, which is important. Secondly, it's, it's very satiating, which means it helps you achieve satiety, helps you feel full. And it keeps you full for longer than a, than a diet that's just very high in protein and low in fat. You'll be hungry again before long. Also, a lot of people think fat is just energy. It's just mm -hmm. calories, mm -hmm. empty calories, totally false. Uh, butter, especially grass-fed butter, is full of vitamins and minerals. So you're not just adding fat to be adding fat. You're adding it for a variety of reasons, okay? I hope this helped clear up a few questions that you might have had. Now, on to the next adventure. Coming up on Reversed. If I use the word lapse, if I say how to come back after a lapse, do any of you know what that means? You have nothing to lose. Just try it and we're here to support you. Welcome to Vista a tennis. I'm really glad you all got here, nice and safe and sound. You know, I really think that um, at the end of this, there's gonna be some, some, some change, some growth. So I think the message that has to go out is the message of love, the message of peace. Exhilarating. Oh, it is celebrating. <laughs> Wonderful. Good. You don't feel too overwhelmed right now. 
That's great, good. So if I use the word lapse, if I say how to come back after a lapse, do any of you know what that means? Or not really? I think of like addiction. You've been off of something, then yeah. go back to it. Yeah, exactly. What would be another word that some people sometimes would use? It would be falling off the bandwagon. <laughs> falling off the wagon? Yeah, some people would use the word cheat. Cheat, cheat. right. Uh, I don't like that because a cheat would be something that I do for my own favor, right? Like if I'm running a race, you go, oh, I'm going to cheat to get ahead. But really, when it comes to addiction, a cheat really sets us back even further. I feel really good at this point in my life. But that has not always been the case. Um, I was a school teacher for 20 years. And as a really young person, I struggled with my weight tremendously. I would started dieting pretty hard in high school. And then by the time I went to college, I gained about 50 pounds. I got married really young and gained another many pounds. There's a woman named Dr. Joan Ifland, and I call her like the queen of addiction. And I've been studying under her, and she talks about the four steps that we can take if we ever have a lapse. And what Dr. Ifland says to do, step one after a lapse, is to speak it out loud to someone that you trust. And what that does is it switches our brain from addiction mode, where we're like, I'm in the middle of it, it's happening, I can't stop thinking about, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, right? That feeling of craving and addiction, that it then switches us to recovery mode by just simply saying, this is what's happening. They release this load that they don't realize they're carrying, this shame or guilt, yes. um, that they feel like they have to hide it. And uh, that actually exacerbates those negative feelings that they attach to this behavior, and it makes them more likely to relapse. All I would say is that you have nothing to lose. Just try it, and we're here to support you. And um, I, feel, I feel they're already, you know, very excited. So we're, we're all so happy, and, you know, we're rooting for them to succeed. Her third step, but it goes right along with that, is release the self-blame and, and guilt and shame. You may feel like, well, then, why wouldn't I just do it again? But really, self-blame and shame and guilt are some of the most painful feelings that a human can experience, right? And that tends to drive people right back to the addiction. And I think research has been very clear that the harder you are on yourself in terms of how you talk to yourself, that actually pushes you away from health, not towards the right behavior. So it doesn't mean become complacent, mm -hmm. but it means that you want to be kind to yourself and you want to talk to yourself as if you're talking to a friend, mm -hmm. you know, and not just all of those really harsh, bitter feelings. Yeah. They're definitely not going to help you um, recover from that lapse very quickly. Oh, number four, okay. plan for the next time. So planning ahead, what, what brought you to that lapse, to the pizza? Did, were you hungry? Were you just at a party and you had no purse bacon? Also, do y'all know about purse bacon? I don't know about purse bacon. Purse bacon. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, you may not have a purse with you, but maybe some <laughs> pocket bacon. <laughs> just, I like to well, carry something with me, whether it's carnival bar, burger patties tucked away, mm -hmm. something that I know that if I'm hungry and caught off guard, I'll have meat available. Mm -hmm. Awesome, so yeah, I guess, this is our advice to you, and I feel like you already are on board with some of them. Some of you have some additional tips that you would want to incorporate. Um, but again, we are here for you, and this is you know, why we are spending this whole week and intervening. So um, feel free to let us know your challenges, and everybody here is working to support you and help make sure you go carnivore once and for, for all, and find the food freedom that we're all looking for. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, welcome to Vista Atenas. And uh, we've been having such an amazing two days here. And um, I'm really proud of everyone. I, you know, I look at this as, as such an amazing team. I mean, Kelly just said something to me earlier. She said, Charles, if that was my only scene, I'm happy. And I said, no way, girl. We, yeah, you, you didn't come out here for that, you know? But that's what I love about each one of you. It's like, you know, we, we really, you guys really sacrificed to be here. And once again, 
um, people came as far as Chafee, 40 hours in a plane, um, Hawaii, um, all around the country and all around the world. And I think what we're doing right here is so amazing and, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's groundbreaking. And I thank you guys for supporting us, me, but also supporting each other. So one of the things I love to do is include my lovely local people here in, um, in, in Costa Rica. And we've got Lorenzo. And Lorenzo is going to do some beautiful singing for us. So Lorenzo, take it away, brother. Ser tu canción desde el principio y fin Que rozar en tus labios y ser tu camino Ser el jabón que te suaviza, el baño que te baña La toalla que deslizas por tu piel mojada Yo quiero ser tu almohada, tu edredón de cera Besarte mientras sueñas y verte dormir Yo quiero ser eso que entra sobre tu cama when I first saw the carnivore community start, it was little tiny forums and web pages that grew to tiny little Facebook pages, and now there's a TV show to talk about it. Carnivore is amazing, and I've had the pleasure of meeting so many amazing experts in this area of your health and wellness. I was excited to come, but I am exhilarated. I felt I was in a surreal dream throughout. This was like being in such a perfect environment with people of the same mind, just all of us driven for the same cause, the cause of health, the cause of the carnivore diet. And personally for, for me, to know that I can have a future myself that's going to be safe, healthy, and I almost feel as though I'm going to be leaving as a superhero in training because the, to meet these people in person is such an experience that just seeing them, it's great to see them on video, but when you see them in person, you can just feel the energy, you can see their shine. These are some very healthy people. And to know that I now have the same chance to, to be the same, I'm really looking forward to the years ahead. Tune in to the next episode of Reversed. So the fat caused the insulin spike? It's just you ate past your personal fat threshold. You ate I don't too know many what calories. that term means. Maria and I go back a long way. I love Maria like a sister, and uh, that's not the first time we've ever butted heads. Were any of you guys, when you first heard about carnivore, were you like, but where will I get vitamin fill in the blank? I'm really excited about this next segment. We had these lovely ladies here before on the last season. So, do any of you practice intermittent fasting or have tried any type of fasts? Dr. Hampton. Man, so happy to spend a moment with you today. Uh, it's been nice getting to know you. Do any of you have any concerns or questions about family life? 